Now in this video we're going to discuss distance and displacement and we're going to define what each of them are and how they're a little bit different. Now distance is probably what you're more used to when you're thinking about lengths uh, of trips and things like that, but displacement has a little bit more of a formal definition and that is actually the quantity that we in physics are actually going to use when we talk about things like velocity and acceleration and then actually do uh, physical calculations. So distance, we can think of distance as just the total uh, path length of a trip. So suppose I start over here and I may walk, you know, a few steps this way and then I'll walk a few steps back this way and the total distance that I've traveled is the sum of my distance this way and then the distance back this way, right? Um, displacement on the other hand, right? Displacement on the other hand is just the difference between your ending and starting points, okay? Now in physics we have to use a coordinate system and we will typically use uh, either x or y to denote our positions, all right? And so a mathematical way to define displacement is to uh, look at your ending point or your final position and look at your starting point or your initial position. Now I'm gonna define the ending point as x sub f for final position, and I'm gonna define my starting point as x sub i for my initial position. So my displacement is actually the difference between my initial, uh, or my, between my final and my initial position. So we're gonna introduce a new symbol. Hopefully you've seen this before, but if you haven't, don't get too intimidated, okay? The delta sign, which is just a, a, a right triangle, and we're gonna call this delta x, okay? And I'm gonna put the vector symbol on it for now. Don't worry about this. We will explain what vectors are in the next video, okay? But uh, this delta x means displacement. Okay, uh, let me write that out a little bit bigger over here. So displacement equals delta x, and anytime we have this delta symbol, that means change in, okay? So in this case, it means change in x. So we're going to take the change in x, and the change in is defined as the final position minus the initial position. So to find the displacement between two points or along a path, all you have to do is find its initial position and its final position, take the difference between those two, and that will give you the displacement. Whereas the distance is, once again, the total path length. All right? Now let's solidify this with a few examples. All right? So example one, let's say Let's say we have two positions, right? An initial position at zero and a final position at 100. And let's say that this is in meters, okay? And let's say this is a race, okay? Let's say it's the 100 meter dash. Now, in the 100 meter dash case, what is the distance and what is the displacement? All right, so we're gonna find both the distance and the displacement in this particular example. So the distance is just the total uh, path length of the trip, and so the total path length was 100 meters, 
And so in this case, the distance is just 100 meters. Now, what about the displacement? Okay, so if we want to find the displacement, um, let's write delta x, and that's going to be xf minus xi, okay? And again, xf is 100 100 meters minus 0 meters, and again, this is going to be 100 meters. So in a straight line moving in one direction, okay, if I'm moving in a straight line and I'm moving in one direction, then the distance and the displacement are going to be equal. But as we will see, see shortly, that will not always be the case, and that has some pretty profound um, implications, okay? So as another example, if we want to keep with our racing theme, okay, let's look at a track, quarter mile track, right? Quarter mile track such as might be enclosing a football field, right? So let's say that we have a starting line of right here. So I'm going to call this X initial, okay? And we're going to do a one lap race, okay? We're going to have our imaginary people run around a uh, uh, the, the track for one lap all right now if this is my starting line I'm going to call this the position zero and if they have to complete one lap then they're going to finish at this same spot and so my final position is going to be uh, here as well okay and so now we can see the difference between distance and displacement so the distance, the total path, the total path that they took around the track is again going to be a quarter mile. Okay, so the distance around the track is just going to be a quarter mile, but what about the displacement? Okay, what about this xf minus xi? Well, in this case, my xf and my xi are both zero. And so my displacement is actually zero miles, okay? I have zero displacement, whereas in this case, I had a quarter mile of distance, right? So when we're talking about the difference between distance and displacement, we have to be very careful to make sure we're specifying which of the quantities we're talking about. They are not exactly the same thing, okay? As a third example, all right, let's say we have a situation where we start and we're going to define our initial position to be zero, okay? And let's say this is a group of friends and they're walking around a neighborhood and they walk down a few blocks to a friend's house, right? And let's say that this distance is four blocks. And they pick up another friend and then they walk back this way one block, all right? So this is one block. So this is their final position. Now what would their final position be, okay? So if I start at zero and I walk four blocks this way, and then I walk one black block back that way, then my final position is gonna be three, okay? Now, what is the dis difference between the distance and the displacement in this case? Now, the distance, the total path length traveled, in that case, they went four blocks and then one more block. So their distance was five blocks. 
but what about their displacement? Okay. Now, when solving distance and displacement problems, when doing the displacement, it would be very wise to get in the habit of writing out this formula before plugging in any numbers. As you'll see in a few videos, I will always highly encourage you to write out your uh, formulas symbolically first and do your algebra. And then once you have solved for the quantity we're looking for, then plug in your numbers. Okay, So it will never hurt to just get in the habit of writing out delta means change in or final minus initial. And so in this case, we have three blocks. minus zero blocks. And so in this case, the displacement is three. Okay, so if, if they're walking on a one, uh, or if they're only walking on a straight street, right, they're not making any corners or anything, they're walking four, four blocks in one direction and then coming back in that same uh, axis, okay, in that same coordinate, they went four in one dimension and then coming backward uh, one unit, then they will have only moved three blocks, okay? Now, as a last example, and this one will be a little bit more exotic, we can keep with the th uh, friend theme. So let's say that we have a group of friends and they start at a friend's house. We'll call this zero. And now we're gonna define a coordinate system and I'm gonna let upward be north and to the right be east, okay? And let's say they walk four blocks east and then they walk three blocks let's clean that three up and then three blocks north. What's the total distance? Well, the total distance traveled is going to be four plus three. So the distance is going to be seven blocks. But what about the displacement? Well, the displacement, again, is just the initial uh, subtracted from the final, or the final minus the initial. So if this is xf, Okay, then the way to find a displacement when you have more than one coordinate going on, right? We have this horizontal coordinate and then we have the vertical coordinate. And so what I'm gonna do is draw a line, the straight line connecting those two, okay? The straight line connecting those two quantities represents delta x. And the length of that line is going to be the magnitude of the change in the uh, dis, uh, change in the position, which is the displacement. Okay, so delta x equals this uh, line right here. Now, what is the length of that line? Well, as we can see, this is a right triangle, and so what we can do is use the Pythagorean theorem, and we can say that delta x is equal to xf minus xi. But displacement is a vector. Again, we don't know what that means yet, so don't worry about it, but we'll explain it uh, shortly. But what we can do is use the Pythagorean theorem, and we can say uh, that since this is the hypotenuse of this triangle, I'm going to take the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared, and the units on this will be blocks. Okay. And if I take four squared, I get 16, plus three squared is nine, 16 plus nine is 25, square root of 25 is five. So the displacement between my initial position and my final position is five blocks, okay? So if I could draw a straight line between these two houses and measure it out, I would measure five blocks. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an introduction to uh, distance and displacement, and that will really be what the rest of the semester is uh, founded upon, okay? This idea of displacement. 
from displacement, we will derive velocity and then acceleration and force and energy and the rest of everything that we will use. So be sure to watch this video carefully and we'll see you next time.